All right, time for another tier list. I'm Jeff D. Lowe, Light Camera Barstool, MovieRankings.net. We'll talk about that in a second. But the tier list we're doing today are the best and worst movies of 2012. You voted last week. I had you vote last week to make the list of movies I'll pick from. You picked some interesting ones, <laughs> some that weren't surprising, some that are fairly interesting. So I will tell you, in my opinion, the best and the worst. Favorite, least favorite, all of that and more. As always, hit like on this video and hit subscribe. That's how you help us out the most. And the bell icon so you know when we drop these videos. I'll be trying to do these tier lists and tier rankings or whatever every Wednesday. But again, reminder, movierankings.net, the absolute best website on the internet when it comes to finding a movie and where you can watch it, where you can stream it, what it's rated, who's in the movie, trailers, all of that and more. Example, right now, we're doing 2012 movies. You can go in, you can filter movies by year, you can filter it by decade, genre, subgenre. We made sure to be as precise as any movie website out there. There are ways to filter movies on movierankings.net that you can't do literally anywhere else. I promise you that. Find the movies you're looking for, stream them, rent them, whatever you want to do. Movierankings.net is the best resource. All right, as always, this is not just best movie, but also a little bit of favor as well. I'll use the same example I always use. Ocean's Eleven is my favorite movie of all time. It doesn't mean I think it's the best movie of all time. So it's a bit of a, a mix of both. 2012 movies, here is the tier. We changed it up a little bit. I will be picking the top five movies. There might be a couple in here that enter the top five, leave the top five, or I put them back. But I'm going to end up with only five in that top five, then A, B, C, D, and F, followed by the Garbo tier, which is just the worst of the worst, which I already know one movie that is absolutely going to be in there. Um, let's start out with movies that I've talked about on some past tier lists. Uh, you can go to the channel here, the playlist. I've done uh, Marvel movies. And I've also done highest grossing movies of all time. So there's a few on here that I've talked about before. Amazing Spider-Man is one. I don't love Amazing Spider-Man. I'll throw it in the C tier for now. Uh, the Avengers. Love the Avengers. Am I going to put it in the top five for the year? I, th I think it's up there with the best of the best in Marvel and comic book movies. But I'll put it on the A tier for now. Uh, I've talked about Dark Knight Rises. I'm a little more down on Dark Knight Rises than some people. I think it's a really awesome movie close to great but i think the big sweeping event storyline of it doesn't really do it for me i'm going to put it at b right now uh that could go up to a but i'll put it at the b tier uh ghost rider spirit of a vengeance uh that's an f tier movie that movie just stinks i hate the hobbit movies hobbit is f tier as well i i truly hate the hobbit movies uh skyfall i'm gonna start skyfall off in the top five might change. Might not end in the top five. I'm going to start it off in the top five. So I think I took care of the movies that I've talked about before. Skyfall is great. And I'll talk about Skyfall whenever I decide if it lands top five or in the A tier. Uh, okay, some other movies on this list. Let's start out. You know what? Let's 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 work our way. And okay, we'll, we'll start with a movie that I think is for sure going to end in the top five. And that's Argo. That's a guaranteed top five. Or that's not leaving the top five here. Um, it is up there with best uh, I think it's an incredible movie. I don't care if they embellished a little bit. The Alan Arkin, John Goodman duo in this movie is uh, as funny and as great for a drama with some comedy in it as it gets. Again, I know they changed some stuff. I don't really care about that. Or I know I'm watching a movie. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, very deserving of best picture. Great performances. Incredible tension. Even if you know how the movie's going to end, the tension is real. You feel it in your seat. Uh, Argo has held up over time, and I know Argo is going to end in the top five on this list. So the, the spots are bare. I don't know if Skyfall is going to end up there uh, when it's all said and done. Another Oscar movie that I'm not actually a big fan of, and if you see me reaching over, I'm trying to. I have a list of movies in front of me, which is some notes, just so I don't, you know, ramble too much. So that's, when you see me reach in front, I'm just deleting movies off the list. Uh, so I'll take Argo out of there. Uh, Flight. Not a huge fan of Flight. Uh, I don't think Flight's a bad movie. Robert Zemeckis, great director, um, but it's far down the list in terms of his movies. And you know what the thing is? I don't even think Denzel's performance is all that great. This is not a memorable Denzel role for me. It's just, it's this absurd movie because like the, the commercial plane flies upside down. Uh, it, it's a C-tier movie for me. 
I, I, I just don't have this up there, especially in 2012. as like one of the better movies. It got a lot of award season love, got a lot of nominations, but uh, no, it, it, it's not on my list. Um, franchise movie, Born Legacy. Uh, this is the one that they, they subbed in Jeremy Renner. I don't think it's as bad as people remember. I'll say that. I, I don't think it's horrible. It's not good, though. And it's definitely nowhere near the three movies that came before it. It kind of got saved by... I'm going to put in the D tier. It kind of got saved by the, the last Bourne movie, Jason Bourne. That's when Matt Damon returned. That's the meme movie, right? Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. That's that movie. This movie's not the worst, uh, but it is such a step down from the first three Bourne movies, which I love that I can't put it above the D tier. It was such a letdown because you're like, okay, maybe it can be a good Bourne movie without Matt Damon. No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, just a, a very much not good movie. Uh, did did not enjoy. Um, next up, let's let's keep scanning. What are some other ones? I don't want to I don't want to go too many off the top of the list that I like. Uh, how about Cloud Atlas? <laughs> I was surprised you guys voted Cloud Atlas in here, and I'm glad you did because here's another. Speaking of memes, this is another meme movie. Uh, this became a meme in like Silicon Valley. I don't think it's as bad as people want it to be. Like it, it's the butt of a joke. Uh, Wachowski's did this movie. I think it truly, it's one of the few movies where, you know what, when they say it's ambitious, I kind of respect it and get it. Like they tried to do a lot of different things in this movie. It is easily the weirdest Tom Hanks role of all time. Not a good movie, but I'll respect it enough. And I don't think it belongs on the F tier. Cause I think the way it's joked about people would want to put on the F tier, but I'll put it on the D tier. Um, it's, it's not good. But it's not as bad as I think people want it to be based on how often it's like used as like the butt of a joke. Um, the guilt trip. Let's do let's do that one next. I'm kind of just bouncing around here. Uh, the guilt trip. If you erased all movies from my memory and then told me this was a movie with Barbara Streisand and Seth Rogen, I wouldn't believe you. Terrible movie. Horrible trailer. The trailer tagline was, the farther they go, the closer they get. And that is just so quintessential, perfect, late 2000s, early 2010s, like crappy trailer comedy taglines. It's just a, a, a very not memorable movie. It's a lot of the same beats as Dirty Grandpa, right? It's like, oh, the older person is raunchy. That's funny. No. Not in, I mean, it might be for you, not for me. Uh, the Guilt Trip is an F-tier movie, bad movie. There are worse comedies on this list, though, by by quite a, a large margin. Uh, another franchise movie. Let's do Hunger Games next. I'm gonna throw Hunger Games on the C tier only because, and I don't, I don't, I think this Hunger Games is decent, but it is. I think Catching Fire is incredible. I think it's a fantastic movie. I think I rated Catching Fire in the night. I think a 92. I love Catching Fire. Um, the shaky cam of this movie is not great. Directed by Gary Ross, did Ocean's 8, Seabiscuit, Pleasantville. I, it, there's like a shaky cam and weird quality, like look-wise, this movie that never really vibed with me. Uh, and it especially was the case after Catching Fire came out, and I thought Catching Fire was outstanding. But, but I'll, put, I'll put Hunger Games on the seat here. I think it still got the job done, and I think it's better than, than the last two movies, the Mockingjay movies. Uh, two movies that are like very similar, but also not at all, I think because they're both based off books right i could be wrong on that i could be wrong on that don't don't yell at me jack reacher is one of them jack reacher is a weird movie uh jack reacher is very below average it's not horrible i'll put it on the seat here but it's actually a combo of of tom cruise and christopher mccrory who did the last two mission impossible movies which are like incredible i mean the mission impossible follow-up i mean for me, and I think many agree, is one of the better action movies ever made. And I think this is really before McQuarrie and uh, Tom Cruise hit their stride together. Brutal opening, by the way. Like just a, a really f like if you're if you're in the mood for like a fun action movie, you start Jack Reacher off. You know what Jack Reacher is? I'll, I'll spoil it. It's like what the fuck? It's really a downer. Um, Alex Cross, I know, is based off a book. <laughs> Uh, this is directed by Rob Cohen. It's an F tier movie. Ooh, it comes close to Garbo. No, because it may drop down a level. Alex Ross is terrible. Uh, Rob Cohen did Triple X. He did the original Fast and Furious movie. It's a bland, boring movie. I don't even know how it got on here. You, there's a couple movies that you guys didn't vote on here that I would have assumed would have been over this. 
I think some people might have voted Alex Cross thinking it was Jack Reacher. I could be wrong. I'm going to run through some movies that didn't make this list, by the way, that I just want to point out from 2012 at the end. Um, so I'll put, yeah, Jack Reacher or now Alex Cross. They go on the list. Alex Cross on the F tier. Uh, what about The Dictator? Not my favorite. I think this is worse than Bruno. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on... I'll put it on the D tier. I think it's funny in spots. Larry Charles, who did Curb, Borat, Bruno. The most memorable part of The Dictator is that Sasha Baron Cohen wore this outfit either to the Globes or the, uh, of the Oscars. I think the Oscars. And he dumped ashes on Ryan Seacrest's suit. And Ryan Seacrest was like very real world, didn't like it. And I don't think like Sasha Baron Cohen because of it to this day. <laughs> it's like the most memorable thing from this movie. Um, it's not terrible. It's just it's It's just not. It's 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 bottom of the barrel for the most part for for Sasha Baron Cohen, especially Larry Charles. Um, let's do a good movie. End of Watch, easily David Ayer's best work. Uh, End of Watch is so like fucking raw and gritty and different for this type of like cop thriller genre, and it it is it, it'll hit you in the fucking feels. This, this movie is brutal. But in a way that is still entertaining, you like the kiss. It's an A-tier movie for me. This is one of the more underrated movies of the last 15, 10, 15 years. 10 years. Because that's why I did this list. Because 2012 is 10 years ago. Um, yeah, I like End of Watch a lot. Michael Pena, Anna Kendrick as well. Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm a big Jake Gyllenhaal guy. So you'll see me often. There's a couple biases that are going to rear their ugly heads when we do this list, by the way. And Jake Gyllenhaal is one of them. I, I do love Jake Gyllenhaal roles. Uh, end of watch, very underrated, big time A tier movie. Uh, let's let's we'll skip around now. I'm kind of like bouncing around alphabetically, so we'll go more towards the end of the alphabet. Rock of Ages. Speaking of Tom Cruise, Rock, <laughs> uh, Rock of Ages is based off a of Broadway show, which I I have not seen. Uh, there's a wacky cast in Rock of Ages. Let me pull up the cast list just so I get it right. Um, Julianne Hough. Uh, Diego Bonetta, Tom Cruise, Alec Baldwin, Russell Brand, Malin Ackerman, Paul Giamatti, Brian Cranston. Isn't wait, Catherine Zeta Jones in this movie? Am I am I losing my mind? Yeah, Catherine Zeta Jones was in this. Not a good movie. Bad. I actually would say bad movie. And this is gonna. This is going on the F tier. Bad singing. I saw a review for this where somebody said it's like bad karaoke with celebrities. There's just some bad singing in this movie. Uh, the thing I remember most is like the Tom Cruise part of the trailer is crazy because he's got like the long hair and his shirt off and he signs someone's boobs. His character, Stacy Jacks. I wish Rock of Ages was good. It's not. Uh, Spring Breaker. Speaking of memorable trailers and marketing, Spring Breaker's F tier movie. I do not like Spring Breakers. Um, I know the Franco role sticks out for some people, but the it's just trash. <laughs> it's just cringe acting. Uh, the most memorable thing, this movie's very memorable in terms of marketing and pre-release. Remember like the pictures that came out and the trailers? Like I, I, I will never forget Spring Breakers. You can decide if that's a good or bad thing, but it's a it's not a movie I like. I liked um Tina Harmony Kareen. I liked the Beach Bum more. Much a much more this, this movie just also had this movie the the pizzazz of this movie that was kind of played up. It didn't really like shine for me. Or Beach Bum did. Beach Bum was fun, dumb but fun. Uh, franchise Taken Two. I'm gonna put Taken Two on the Garbo tier. Um, I hate, I hate the Taken movies. Hate them. I think Taken is fine. And if I just single out Taken, it's fine. It's whatever. Iconic for, you know, its line. Uh, I will find you, that line, whatever. The sequels are brutal, brutal movies. I, sound, I just sounded like um, Josh Brolin in um, in Dune. Um, the Harkonnens are brutal. Uh, taken 2 is a dumb premise because he gets taken, Right? Am I misremembering Taken? He gets taken, right? Him and his wife get taken. It's just, it, it borders on parody of itself at that point. Not a good movie. I don't like Taken. I don't like, I mean, I don't like the Taken franchise. I think it just, it did too much. You know what? I'm going to throw another movie that's in a franchise in the Garbo tier. And this one's actually, this one's terrible. Paranormal Activity 4. Paranormal Activity was a really cool idea. And I think that that is... It's not, you know, not transcendent of the genre. 
four, but it was a cool idea. It was different, different take on found footage. Paranormal Activity 4, I mean, 4? Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Just bad. I almost want to put Taken off this tier. I'm going to move Taken 2 to the F tier. What did I even rate Taken 2? I bet I rated Taken 2 in like the, the, the 30s. Yeah, 34. Yeah, it doesn't belong in the Garbo tier. Paranormal Activity 4 is bad, though. That belongs in the Garbo tier. Um, other movies, I don't want to, let's, let's do maybe something a little higher. Let's go, let's get a little more positive. Lincoln, Lincoln's elite. Lincoln goes on the top five for now. I, I, I think Lincoln's going to get bumped off, but I'll put Lincoln top five for now. I know what people are saying people don't like this movie. Long, boring. It's one of the greatest performances of all time. Uh, Daniel Day Lewis gets so lost in the role of, of Abraham Lincoln and it's incredible. And there's so many great things I could say about it, but I'm mostly going to just talk about the fact that when I saw this movie, this is a testament to how good this movie is. I saw this movie in State College, Pennsylvania. I was going to Penn State. I was a senior at the time. A senior, yes. Because it came out like Oscar season, right, in the fall of 2012. There was a, a, a lady in front of me who had a bag of the, the Lifesaver mints. And she unwrapped fucking hard candy Lifesaver white spearmint mints or wintergreen. The entire movie. It's like three hours. Just individually unwrapped mints. Your your mouth after eating that many mints has to just burn. Like she must have had burns in her mouth from eating that many mints. That's like the one. Lincoln is incredible. And I should think of Andrew. Andrew, I almost said Andrew Dice Clay. I should think of Daniel Day Lewis's performance as Lincoln, but I only think of that woman wrapping those, unwrapping those fucking mints, man. It's all I can think of. We'll stick in the L's, but I'll Looper. Looper's good. I like Looper. Looper should probably be in the A tier, but I'm going to put it on the B tier. I don't really know why. It's different. I love time travel movies. The Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Bruce Willis, like DH weird thing shouldn't work, but it does. I, and I like Ryan Johnson. I might move that one up, but I'm going to put it on the B tier for now. I want, I want to be selective with my A tier movies. I like Looper. I like Looper quite a bit. Um, Men in Black 3. Men in Black 3, I'm going to be... Do, do, am I controversial? Nah, that's a C-tier movie. I was gonna, do I put on the B-tier? No. Men in Black 3, I love Josh Brolin. That's another guy I like a lot. Just talked about him. Uh, I think he was cool in that role, playing the younger version of Tommy Lee Jones' character. Uh, Will, shout out Will Smith. Men in Black 3 is better than Men in Black 2. It's nowhere near Men in Black, but Men in Black 3 was fun. Got the job done. And I could be misremembering. I've not seen it probably since the year it came out. So... If you think I'm crazy for that one and I should rewatch it, tell me. Uh, the Three Stooges. How did this make the vote? Why did you get this? This must have been a bit getting this one in here. Three Stooges is a Garbo movie. Get the fuck out of here with this. The thing I remember most from Three Stooges is that they dropped a, I think they dropped a piano on a nun, right? Am I wrong? Right? They, they drop a piano on a nun. I might be misremembering that, but I'm pretty sure a piano falls on a nun. It might be a bell, a large church bell. It's one or the other. I'm showing the clip right now. That's what I remember from that movie. Three Stooges, bad movie. Why did the Three Stooges need to be remade in 2012? Unbelievable. Place Behind the Pines, or Beyond the Pines. Here's a movie that should be really good. This, this should be an A-tier movie. And I actually, only until like today, finally thought of the movie to most compare it to. I'm going to put it on the... I'm going to put it on the B-tier. It has its problems. This is, this is a flawed movie. Incredible cast. Just, I mean, look, listen to this cast. Place Beyond the Pines. This movie is, is rating-wise, not a B-tier movie, but I'm going to give it a little love because I love Ryan Gosling, Eva Mendes, Bradley Cooper, Rose Byrne, Mahershala Ali, Bruce Greenwood. It should be better. But there's just something about Place Beyond the Pines. It doesn't feel as, as like real, right? It wants to be so real and deep and raw. It's got that, like, that do bad shit because you want to do good things storyline. And it reminds me of the town. The town executed that. You cared about the people in the town. I didn't care about the people in this movie as much. Place Beyond the Pines should have been so much better. 
and I like it, and I think it deserves more credit than it than it gets. But this should be an A tier movie. And you know what? It's 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 B at best. Looking at it in the B tier, I don't think it should probably be there. But we'll we'll we'll, we'll revisit. Um, here's an A tier movie, Pitch Perfect. I I I brag about Pitch Perfect that I was like one of the first to see this movie. I remember telling people I saw Pitch. I'm gonna be a snob. What if I was a movie snob, but just like about Pitch Perfect? Pitch Perfect was so delightful. The music was great. It was a fun time. The jokes were good. Anna Kendrick was great. This is like the movie that really like. I I personally like love Anna Kendrick from Up in the Air, but this is a movie that where people like really made Anna Kendrick their like celebrity crush, right? Like she was like the Hollywood it girl, um, quirky, you know, a little different, funny, witty, sharp. This is like that movie for people, right? But there were so many funny performances in Pitch Perfect. It's well written. The music kills. All the music is great in Pitch Perfect. Uh, it's it's that's an A movie. That's an A tier movie. Um, let's move down the list. What about The Watch? Here's an F tier movie. The Watch. Very weird marketing for The Watch. You can look it up if you want. Um, actually, I just I mean, it, The Watch's marketing was changed due to the 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 killing of Trayvon Martin because that that was like the it was neighborhood watch related. Crazy weird story there. There's some the, every once in a while you get a movie that has like a really weird connection to a like a, a big news event and like things are changed marketing and stuff. Obviously, Spider Man Two or excuse me, the original Spider Man had that. Like they weren't going to be allowed to be nominated for Os- the Oscars if they didn't remove the the uh, World Trade Center from their marketing material post nine eleven. It's just just one of those movies that has like a, a connection. You're like, what the fuck? When you read the Wikipedia page, read the Wikipedia page or the IMDb for. Uh, for Master of Disguise, though, that's a wild one. Uh, but the, the the watch had this weird alien theme to it, and it was just never funny to me. Uh, it's one of those like just tired comedies. You're like, uh, dime a dozen, not funny. You want a funny alien comedy? Go see The World's End, the the uh, Simon Pegg movie. Very funny movie. Um, <laughs> Trouble with the Curve. I don't even. I, how did this make it in here? I, don't, like, I almost don't even have anything to say about this movie. D tier movie. I'm gonna just <laughs> our our podcast lights camera barstool. We we joked about this movie one time. Our our old co host Trill Ball and said it. He just just throw him the curve. That's like the only thing I know about this movie. Does he even say that? Like when I see this movie, I just I just think of Clint Eastwood hanging over a fence with like that with that like plastic tubing on the top for safety. And just looking at him like throw him the curve. That's like all I can think of when I think of this movie. He may not even say that. Not a good movie, though. That's for sure. Some big names in this movie. Not a good movie. Um, Wrath of the Titans. Here's an F. Better than the first movie. It's better than Clash of the Titans. Still bad, though. It's like it's like if you just went to a like a, like a soup store. A soup and sandwich and salad store, and you took all the soups and you just poured them into one pot. That's wrath. It's just like it's just sensory overload. It's just too much. It's just it's. I think I've used this word on this tier. Right? It's a gobbledygook. It's just like what the fuck. It's too much nonsense. Uh, let's let's go back to the positive side. Wreck It Ralph. Love Wreck It Ralph. Perfect. This is a movie that a tier movie. Blend of nostalgia, right, with all the video game characters, but a new, fresh thing. Like, when, when you have these movies that are heavily based on nostalgia, you can't overload on nostalgia, right? Because then it should become like a cheap trick, and it's not a, it's not endearing anymore. It's like fake. But then if you take nostalgia and then you move in a direction of like different things, and you create something new based off the nostalgia, if it doesn't dip into nostalgia enough, it doesn't work. You don't enjoy it. Wreck-It Ralph, perfect blend of both. A lot of nostalgia, but new characters, something different, a new storyline, and new video games that you can enjoy. Um, and it made the movie a, a, a really good. This is around the time where you were like, "Oh shit!" Disney Animation Studios can kind of make movies as good as Pixar does, which we'll get to Pixar. Actually, let's do Pixar now. Brave. I don't like Brave all that much. Brave. I just don't think Pixar, the fantasy adventure storyline, works for Pixar all that well. They just had that with what was it called? 
man. Um, shit. What's the What's the recent Pixar movie with Chris Pratt and Tom Holland? Onward. People are screaming that just now. Onward. I don't think the fantasy adventure thing works for Pixar. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't. It doesn't play well for me. I think Brave looks great. One of the things with Brave is that like they made great looking hair. I think Brave is at the top of the C tier, but I, I don't. Brave is like bottom tier. If we did Pixar movies, Brave is like F, D or F, for just Pixar movies. Um, I, I don't. I don't love Brave. We'll do Pixar movies eventually. We'll do animated movies eventually because I feel like Pixar. That's it's like kind of obvious, like where you have everything. Uh, yeah, I, I think Brave's a good attempt at something that I, I don't think works for Pixar. I think there's 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 formulas for Pixar that work, and some things that don't. And I, I think like the fantasy adventure thing just doesn't play well with like the style and like the theme of Pixar movies. Um, American Reunion. I remember American Reunion being better than it actually was. We rewatched American Reunion not that long ago. For what it is, it's enjoyable, right? American Wedding was bad. Even the trailer, the, one of the trailers for American Reunion, they're like, the gang's back. This time, they're really back. I think there's even a line where like, hey, everyone's going this time. Because I, I think who wasn't in, not everyone was in American Wedding. I know Chris Klein wasn't, right? Oz, he wasn't in it. But everyone is in this one. I thought this was better. It's not great. I thought this was a better movie than it really was. I remember like leaving this being like, you know what? That's like close to the original. It, it isn't at all. Like not even in the same stratosphere. Um, I'll throw it on the, but I will throw it on the C tier because you know what? There's nostalgia there. We'll mix it up a little bit. Uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. B tier movie. Not a great movie. But it's the perfect schlocky nonsense. It is fun, and there's a there's a reviews of this, and I think the Rotten Tomatoes consensus says it it's the wrong blend of like silliness and seriousness. I think it's the perfect blend of being silly and serious. I think that's why it's so enjoyable. Is that it's 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 it it's on the side of absurdity, right? Like when it's so absurd, it's enjoyable. So I like Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. It's a great deal of fun. One of uh, my coworkers at Barstool, Glenny Balls, loves this movie. It's like one of his favorite movies. I think this is a fun movie. I like Vampire Hunter. It's it's ridiculous. And the fact that it came out the same year as Lincoln is so funny. Let's actually do two movies that came out the same year that were very similar as well. There's a lot of twin movies this year. Because I think like Alex Cross and and Jack Reacher people for some they for some reason like associate each other because they're based off books, which I still might be wrong on that. So can yell at me if that's the case um but you have two abe lincoln movies there were two snow white movies from this year mirror mirror being one of them terrible movie this movie was in that weird uncanny vat like it was uh, more cartoony than the other snow white movie from that year but also was really serious but then tried to be cartoony and weird and live in this bizarre world of like hey it's the real world but it's still kind of like cartoony and bubbly and bizarre mirror mirror is bad horrible army hammer performance like whew, bad julia robs performance as well mirror mirror is almost garbo tier but i'm gonna put it on the f it may drop down there i'm only gonna put five movies in the garbo tier you want to know how to break a spell say hello to my little friend <laughs> yeah! i have the five so i'm not gonna i'm not yeah i'm not gonna mirror mirror is not gonna be on there Three Stooges might jump off that tier, too. I'll be honest. Paranormal Activity 4 might as well. Those movies might not be... They may be F-tier movies by the end of this. Uh, Les Mis. Les Mis had a ton of hype. How often do musicals get the hype of, like, this is going to be an Oscar winner? And, I mean, it got a lot of nominations, but it's not very good. Russell Crowe singing. Jesus. It's just kind of a drab, dreary movie. It's better than Cats. Tom Hooper did this movie. It's better than Cats. So there's something. I, I, I just don't love it. Fans, if it didn't love it, wasn't for me. Les Mis had a lot of hype, too. People thought it was really going to just do numbers at the Oscars. Uh, Killing Them Softly. Here's an underrated movie, I think. I don't know. Maybe it's properly rated. Uh, Andrew Dominic, same guy who did Assassination, Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford. Awesome movie. I, I think Killing Him Softly is okay. What did I rate Killing Him Softly? I bet I gave it a 79. Looking it up right now, moverankings.net. 78. There you go. 
I, you know what? I, I, this this is this is I like it more than audiences do. It, it's a dark thriller, some humor involved. I think it's got a good script. It's punchy. I, I like killing himself. I think it's underrated. Uh, Life of Pi. I'm gonna put Life of Pi on the A tier, and I think that's a little high, but it is a stunning movie to look at. It's an achievement intimate movie but also this open world at sea i think it's a beautiful story ang lee man even when ang lee does something bad you gotta respect what he goes for he's got a couple duds recently billy lynn's long halftime walk bad movie bad bad movie gemini man not a good movie i don't like the way he shoots those movies that they got that soap opera effect look to them but you know what brokeback mountain the Hulk movie's bad, but it was it was something different. Life of Pi is is I think Life of Pi is, is, is a stunning movie to look at. It's a great story. It, it made a lot of money, so I know a lot of people saw it. I think it made over half a billion dollars. I think it made yeah, it made six hundred and nine million dollars. It was nominated for Best Picture, but I think it's a movie that people forgot about, and I wish people wouldn't forget about it because I think it truly is a really good movie, and it has such an incredible look to it. Where I have it rated as a B movie, it's an eighty nine, but I think it belongs on the A tier just because it's like an it's an achievement in filmmaking, and sometimes, even though I love Marvel movies and I love like garbage still kind of snobby and annoying about the artsy stuff. So I, I like, if you've not seen life of Pi, watch life of Pi. It is, especially if you have like a nice TV, a nice setup at home, nice surround sound, good 4k, you know, get it in the highest definition. You can get I, I life of Pi is, is awesome. Ang Lee, I mean, he's a visionary crouching tiger. He's done some bad movies, but he's done some really great movies too. And, and I, I, I respect his vision. He tries something different every time. Uh, that's Life of Pi. Um, Magic Mike. Man, I want to put Magic Mike on the A tier, so I'm going to do it. No, I'm going to put it in the B tier. I, Magic Mike was a joke when it came out, right? By most people. It's like it's, it's the stripper movie. It's a B tier movie. But I give it the sentiment of an A tier because you know what? It is so fun. Steven Soderbergh, even when they're making it, we've interviewed like Matt Bomer who made the movie, Joe Manganiello who was in the movie, and they said like, we we didn't really realize how big this movie would be. Like when they were making it, it was smaller. It ended up being this big Warner Brothers movie, and it didn't make a ton of money, but it's got a cult following. It had a, a big sequel. Fucking Matthew McConaughey is in this movie. Just a fun time. So unexpected. It's just such an unexpected, very enjoyable movie. And and I like Magic Mike quite a bit, and I almost want to put it on the on, on the A tier, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it on the B tier. It's not great, but it's really good. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, man on a ledge, not to be confused with Man on Wire, which is a movie based on the guy who tightroped in between the World Trade Center, which is based on a movie Man on a Wire. Wait, no, Man on Man on Wire is the documentary. What's the name of the movie? The Long Walk or something? What's the What's the Walk movie? It's like a, the walk. It's just called The Walk, of course, from Robert Zemeckis. There you go, from Joseph Gordon-Levitt. The movie's like very mediocre. The documentary is like unreal. Oscar-winning documentary, Man on a Wire, about the guy who the, the tightrope in between the World Trade Centers. Check that out, Man on a Ledge. <laughs> Funny movie. Um, Orny as shit. Lame trailer. I, I got to play clips from the trailer right now. There's so many buzzwords in this trailer. I remember that trailer so much. Like the I'm an innocent man thing. It's not horrible. It's entertaining. It's This is such a cable TV movie. This is, this is some shit that you see on TNT and you can't find anything else. And Practical Jokers isn't even on. You're not feeling the Carbonaro effect on True TV. So you're going to leave Man on a Ledge on TNT or TBS. Um... Moonrise Kingdom, top five. Uh, this is my number one Wes Anderson movie. I love Moonrise Kingdom. It is the perfect blend of that Wes Anderson boxed in, like claustrophobic universe, but also I think the open world, literally, because it's outside like the entire time. It's in a tent and stuff too. A Moonrise Kingdom is just wonderful. It's all of his tropes, but at the maximum level of enjoyment. 
I think the cast is great. It's a Bruce Willis movie. There's so many perfect roles for the, the, the usual suspects of the Wes Anderson movies. Grand Budapest Hotel is up there too, but Moon, Moon, Moonrise Kingdom is my favorite. That's top five, and that's not going off the top five. Lincoln, I'm taking off the top five. Lincoln goes down to an A. Lincoln, Lincoln's A. I, I, I think I know that the other two movies are going to be in the top five. I'm looking at them right now. Um, I love Moonrise Kingdom. If you don't like Wes Anderson, though, I, I get why you may not like it. That's that's like the most – is there any more like easy thing to say? Than like I would get why you don't like this if you don't like X than saying that about Wes Anderson. Battleship. That's a Garbo movie. Why does this exist? Look at this cast, too. Rihanna, Taylor Kitsch, who we're going to talk about. Actually, I'll get to Taylor Kitsch again in a second. Uh, Alexander Skarsgård, Liam Neeson. Th- this this came around the time of like, you know, we got to make a movie about anything. Fucking toys, board games, literally Battleship. This movie is so terrible. Terrible, terrible. Almost like offensively bad. Brutal. Like a like borderline zero of a movie. Uh, let's talk Taylor Kitsch. John Carter. John Carter deserves so much better. I don't know John Carter like I know Dune. I've become a big Dune fan, but John Carter is an incredibly influential science fiction work. Uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, box office bomb ever from Disney. Huge, huge box office bomb. You can there. There's a movie. There's a video from Joe Blow on on YouTube. They go down kind of a, like a rabbit hole of why this movie failed. And this this movie had an incredible marketing disaster. They went on GMA, did a trailer, didn't work in the morning at all. It was a boring trailer. Fans were pissed. Then they went on Kimmel with a different trailer. Fans still pretty pissed. Then they had a minute long Super Bowl trailer, which was apparently really good. It had some action in it. It was going to debut during the Super Bowl. Patriots Giants. Second Patriots Giants. And then it, they got bumped because with injury timeouts, sometimes commercials, they have to change up the course. And there's alternate versions of commercials of the Super Bowl. And John Carter got bumped to a 30 second commercial where they just showed like little clips that made up the word John, the words John Carter. Uh, so the marketing was a disaster. It made no money. It's not a horrible movie. The movie's better than I think people remember it as. It's better than the box office bomb that you would think it is. Um, it's not good, though, and, and they could do so much better. And I hope they give John Carter a try again at some point because from all accounts, the source material deserves it. Uh, Ted. Love Ted. Very funny movie. Ted goes on the A tier. Very funny comedy. Uh, Seth MacFarlane, that whole family guy crew, they put their entire weight behind this movie, and it shows. I still like Ted, too, as well. Ted, too, is not great. And Ted, too's, Ted, too, falls, I think, maybe victim to too much, like, the references, right? Where it's like, all right, we get it. Like pop culture reference or pop culture reference. Uh, the Giovanni Urbisi character, very funny in Ted. Ted is a Ted was Ted was an idea that sounds stupid, sounds dumb, ended up being just very funny. Uh, comedy. This is forty. Spinoff of Knocked Up. This is forty was a bummer. I really wanted this is forty to be good. I love Paul Rudd. And this is actually the reverse. Usually, like I show my bias and I would rate a Paul Rudd movie high. This is this is forty. Just just really, yeah, it didn't really do it for me. Um, it never found its stride. It never found its comedy stride. This movie and it's long as fuck. It is long. It's almost like two and a half hours. I think long movie, and it just kind of like it's like going down a cobblestone road in terms of like bumpiness. Just never really finds a smooth lane. Uh, Total Recall, the remake, piece of shit, F tier movie. Why does this exist? Why do they do this? Everything that made the original Total Recall amazing from 1990. Paul Verhoeven, who did Starship Troopers. Oh, love Starship Troopers. Robocop, Basic Instinct. Just a brutal remake. Everything that made the original so great, such a sci-fi classic, is just gone from this movie. I'll use the word drab again. Lifeless. It's a life. It, It hits every beat in terms of the classic way people fuck up remakes. Um, Wanderlust, another movie, another Paul Rudd movie. This is an F tier movie. Jeez, this is that's D tier. It's not F. Wanderlust is Wanderlust should be funny based on premise, right? 
but another movie that never really finds it finds its way above water in terms of comedy. Like it just feels kind of forced. All the humor and the jokes, you're like, it's like they have to work hard for it to be funny. Uh, this means war. <laughs> F. I for the longest time, like up until today, thought this was based off Spy vs. Spy, the comic strip. Also, which some people around my age may know it from the Mountain Dew commercials, but it's also it's a comic strip. I thought this was a Spy vs. Spy movie. Like I learned today, it's not. It's just a. Sp- it's it is two spies scoring off over a woman. I mean, it's got Tom Hardy, Chris Pine, Reese Witherspoon. Oof, bad movie. Um, what to expect when you're expecting? It's a, it's a, it's a mid 2000s movie made in the 2010s. Just like, watch the trailer. You're like, what? I mean, whatever. I guess if you, you'd you have to kind of see the trailer come out live in 2012, but just a movie like a couple years too late. I don't even have much to say about this movie. Uh, Safety Not Guaranteed. Love Safety Not Guaranteed. Colin Trevorrow movie. Uh, he he did the old with the Book of Henry. Oof, bad movie. Bad movie. Bad movie. We'll talk about that another time. He Then he did Jurassic World. Then he got kicked off Star Wars. Uh, Safety Not Guaranteed is weird. Super underrated movie. Aubrey Plaza. Um, Jake Johnson's in it. Who is... Wait. Why am I blanking on Safety Not Guaranteed? The, the main person in Safety Not Guaranteed. I'm like losing my mind. Oh, Mark Duplass. Jeez. Uh, it is a very different... I don't even want to say. If you haven't seen it, I don't even want to spoil it. Because the twist and turn this movie makes... It's so simple, but it's like not. It's this really cool mix of a very simple movie, but like grand and kind of weird with these like big sweeping ideas at the same time. Same thing, not guaranteed. Small movie. If you've not seen it, definitely check it out. I will not spoil it. Person being a wallflower made no money. I remember this movie being a huge deal. Maybe it's because it was an Emma Watson movie that wasn't Harry Potter. Well, it made $33 million. I thought this was like a big YA novel to movie adaption. It wasn't. Maybe it's because Emma Watson was in it and that made it a big deal. I don't. I remember this making more money, being better. It's a good movie. I like Perks of Being a Wallflower. It's a B tier movie. I didn't know it was. Like, it made no money. It made thirty three million dollars. I thought it was a huge deal. I was stunned to learn that today. If you ask me how much money Perks of Being a Wallflower make, I would have said like four hundred million dollars. I know it's small, but I thought it was like a big adaption. Uh, Seven Psychopaths. I actually own this movie on iTunes. It's like one of th- like four or five movies I own on iTunes. Um, mid-tier C movie. It's funny. Uh, it's a little too much, though. Martin McDonough did this. He did three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. He also did In Bruges. It's funny. It's got a really, really great cast. Seven Psychopaths cast is... You want to talk about somebody who I will like almost anything they do. Uh, Sam Rockwell. Go see Moon. Go see it. Rent Moon or Stream Moon if you haven't seen it. Colin Farrell, Woody Harrelson, Christopher Walken. Uh, Michael Stolberg's in this movie. It's it's a funny movie. It's just, it's not in Bruges. Like in Bruges is amazing. Incredible. And I like three billboards, but this movie was a big step below. Moon is on Hulu, by the way. Moon's a 2009 sci-fi movie with Sam Rockwell, and it is fucking unbelievable. Really good movie. Haunting movie. Uh, The Seven Psychopaths, C-tier. Silver Linings Playbook. You know what? Because for for now, it goes on top five of the year. Could see it getting bumped down. Uh, Silver Linings Playbook has one of the best scripts of 2012, easily. Great performances. I mean, this was like the, this the start of, of J-Law, like, mania. The chemistry between her and Bradley Cooper, Robert De Niro, it, it, is, it is an awesome movie. I love all the pieces of this movie. Um, it's a great character movie. Sc- I want to talk about punchy script. This move, This script is great. I, I love Silver Linings Playbook. Like, very bullish on it. I think even a 94 out of 100. Uh, I didn't mention the other Snow White movie, by the way. 
Snow White and the Huntsman. <laughs> F-tier movie. Way too serious. Way too dark. Stupid movie. This is before Chris Hemsworth. And, and this is the year that... Because Chris Hemsworth in Avengers was very good in this year. Like, you could tell he had, like, some comedic chops. He's, like, a little more lighthearted actor. He wasn't very good in Snow White and the Huntsman. Nor was Kristen Stewart. D- disastrous movie. Um, One for the money. <laughs> Debbie Reynolds is in this movie. Rest in peace, Debbie Reynolds. Uh, F tier movie. One for the money. Well, what are we doing here? Like this, she, Catherine Eagle is like a really weird half assed New York accent in this movie. I don't remember much of this movie. I remember the trailer. Not a good movie though. I just remember not being very good, and I remember that accent like vividly. Joe Morelli skipped out on bail. Fifty grand, dead or alive. I can do this. Uh. Project X. <laughs> Project X. St- uh, Project X. You know what you're getting yourself into if you watch Project X. Uh, it's not the worst. It's not good. Project X is a D tier movie. You know what I'm going to do? This is all. This is. When I think of Project X, I think of that Lakers fan gif. The both of them, actually. The one guy who holds up the chain and says, Lakers, and like holds up the L. And then the, like the kid in the crowd who puts his like sunglasses down. I'll play both of those. When I think of Project X, I think of those gifts. Uh, Prometheus. I love Ridley Scott. Don't love this movie. I, I think it's 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 too ambitious. It tries to do too much. It never connected for me. It's just too complex. Good performances. I love Michael Fassbender. Um, I'll put it on the C tier. It, it's I know some people love it. It has such grand ideas. Actually, I'm going to put it on the D tier because I, I didn't really connect with it. Nah, I'm going to put it on the C tier because you know what? I like really Scott. I like what he went for here. It just didn't work for me. Simple as that. Uh, Frank and Weenie. <laughs> it's a B tier movie. Like after Prometheus is a complex movie. To serve Frank. Frank and Weenie's fun though. Frank and Weenie, it's different. It's Tim Burton. If you like Tim Burton, I think you'll really like this movie. If you don't, I still think you'll like it. Like it's not too Tim Burton-y. It's animated. It's fun. It's different. Good. Good around Halloween. I like. I like Frank and Weenie. I can't, I can't say too many bad things about that movie. Uh, the campaign. Jay Roach did this movie, and Jay Roach did another movie, which I cannot believe made your list here. People voted for this list of movies. Uh, this movie, like, it's an HBO movie. We'll talk about it in a second. The campaign is one of two political movies from Jay Roach on this list. Jay Roach did Meet the Parents, Austin Powers, Bombshell, recently. It's the campaign was not bad. It's just not memorable. Like it's just not one of those memorable comedies. I'll throw it on the C tier. It's funny in spots, but nothing about the campaign truly because of like the comedies of like that era, the early 2010s, late 2000s. It just it just doesn't stand out. Expendable twos, best of the franchise. D tier. That that's the reason I'll put it on. I think all the movies are like F tier movies, but I'll. I'll I'll put it on the D tier. It's the best of the franchise. I mean, Stallone, Statham, Jet Li, Lundgren, Norris, Van Damme, Bruce Willis, Arnie. I'll give it like I'll throw it like a I'll throw it like a bone here. Like, okay, D tier, good, good for you. Um, the five year engagement. I'm lower on this movie than many people are. It's an Apatow movie. Um, I I'll go as far to say. I can't put it next to the guilt trip. It could be a lot funnier. Same crew that did Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Neighbors, Get Him to the Greek. I I just don't think it's a very good movie. It's close to F. I'll put it on the D tier, though. Uh, Oh, yeah, the Game Change. (laughs) Game Change is the Sarah Palin movie. Uh, It's the HBO movie, Jay Roach. And he did recount the movie about the 2000 election. Game Change is, like, weird. Julianne Moore plays Sarah Palin. Ed Harris plays John McCain in one of the most bizarre like things to look at. Uh, I don't know how this made the list. Game Change is not objectively terrible, and I think they do a good job like in their role. I think Julianne Moore does a decent job as Sarah Palin. I think it's like a C movie, but I'm going to put it on the on the D just because it's like it, it bothers me. It's like weird. It's a bizarre movie. Contraband. P U. Stinky fucking movie. What a cast though. F tier movie. What a cast. Mark Wahlberg movie, but Ben Foster, Kate Beckinsale, Giovanni Urbisi, Diego Luna, Caleb Landry Jones. 
I hate these types of Mark Wahlberg. And I will tell you this right now, Shooter, Gar, I, I hate Shooter, Garbo movie. But if we're talking about bad Mark Wahlberg, nothing as bad as The Happening. Happening is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. Terrible. Um, Chronicle. Chronicle is... I like Chronicle. Chronicle's a B-tier movie. Chronicle set off one of the most unbelievable dominoes in the history of movies. Uh, because of Chronicle, Josh Trank, it's decent, fun, found, and the fact that found footage worked in 2012 is crazy. Very cool movie. And because of it, he got Fantastic Four 2015, which was a disaster. Was it the studio? Was it him? We don't know. Because of that, he then lost the Boba Fett movie. Uh, and the Boba Fett movie was never made. They ended up turning it into a, a, a Disney Plus series. It's just kind of this crazy domino effect of things. Um, and and <laughs> Trank is up there. Trank Trank's interesting. It's, 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 it's Chronicles awesome. So shout out to Josh Trank. Fantastic Four 2015. Probably worst comic book movie ever made. Is it his fault though? It may not be. Very well may not be. Um, only a couple left. 2012 Garbo movie. I hate 2012. Big sweeping disaster movies. They're not my thing. And this is bottom of the barrel. I just think it sucks. Like I just don't think there's any other words to say on that. Um, what else is here? Oh, did I already do Man on a Ledge? Gentlemen, you are go for takedown. What if he didn't do it? What if he's innocent? He's playing you. This is my negotiation. Nick, we need more time. Don't move. Stay where you are. You want me to trust you? Tell me it's done. I am an innocent man! Oh, actually, I didn't put man on a ledge. Man on a ledge. It's kind of fun. It sucks, but it's kind of fun. Ah, fuck it. Put it on the D tier. Whatever. You know, because I like it more than Taken 2. Um, Red Tails. Oof. Not a good movie. Great story. Tuskegee Airmen, great story, bad movie. Bland. It's a bland, not compelling movie, and it's a shame. That's an F-tier movie. It's bad, bad, just bad everything. Um, George Lucas was is very much associated with that movie because he produced, he didn't direct it. Many people think he did direct it. I think Red Letter Media had a video on this a long time ago, too. Uh, they were like, it's almost offensively bad. VHS. I'm not really high on VHS. Horror people love VHS, I know. I'll put VHS in the C tier. Uh, another different kind of found footage take that I do like. I actually like the sequel better. I think the sequel is a better movie. I think it's a solid movie. I'll put VHS in the C tier. I'd put the sequel probably in the B tier, close to it. I I, I like what, what VHS is going for. Um, all right. We're nearing the end here. Why did I not put John Carter on the tier list? Did I just forget to put movies in the tiers? John Carter goes in the D tier. It's not an F tier movie. Okay, all right, here we go. You can probably guess. Let's start off with let's let's complete the Garbo list. I'm going to put Three Stooges on the F tier. That's my boy goes on the Garbo tier. Uh, that's my boy is not funny. It's weird. It's creepy. It's terrible. It sucks. It's it's as bad of an Adam Sandler joint as you could possibly get. People in the barstool office, I won't name names, love this fucking movie, and I do not get it. I just don't get it. This movie breaks my brain. I fucking hate this movie. Which is such a shame. I mean, it's Adam Sandler, Andy Samberg. Uh, and then rounding out, you know what? I'm actually going to take Paranormal Activity 4 off the F, off the Garbo tier. Because you know what? Like, what? Like, that, that feels so cliche. The, the Devil Inside is the second worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Ever. It's like 5,080-something, just ahead of Jack and Jill. The worst Adam Sandler movie. It's Devil Inside is a zero out of 100. It is not a movie. It doesn't end. The, the end of Devil Inside is one of the most unbelievable things. If, if this wasn't voted into this list, I would have talked about it anyway. The movie ends out of nowhere. And then... They tell you for more, go to this fucking website. There's like a title card and they send you to a website. People thought that it was a mistake. They thought it was an editing mistake, like the movie skipped or something. The Devil Inside is not a complete movie. It is horrible. It is one of the worst things I've ever seen. It is the second worst movie, to be exact, I've ever seen in my life. The Devil Inside is like king of the Garbo list. 
Uh, Red Dawn is in there too. Red Dawn is a movie that's that did spark my my rule that uh, if Josh Peck is in the movie, it automatically gets two points, so it's not a zero. I think gave it a five out of a hundred. It's just not topical. Like Red, the original Red Dawn was topical. It's like the Red Scare. This movie, like they changed things up. I believe it's North Korea, right? Um, nothing about this movie. Like, also they're high schoolers. They they look thirty. Not that that stopped some movies. Some movies that do that are good, but it's like, it's just a ridiculous movie. The acting is terrible. Red Dawn, bad, 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 bad movie. Uh, That leaves us with four movies. All very worthy of being at the top of the list. I'm going to put The Master on the A tier. I like The Master. I know some people do not. It is a very fucking artsy fartsy movie. Um, It is one of the greatest looking movies ever. It's also on like 50 streaming sites, by the way. So if you've never seen it, you can watch it. I like Paul Thomas Anderson. He has some artsy fartsy movies that I don't like. I do not like the Phantom Thread movie. I, I think it's good. I, I recognize it for what it is. But if we talk about like favoritism, I don't love it. I think the Master's really good. Um, I think Amy Adams, Joaquin Phoenix, and then rest in peace, Philip Seymour Hoffman. I think Philip Seymour Hoffman is the best in this movie. I think this is a really just kind of rich movie. Uh it, it's just one of those things that's very much my shit. I think it tells an incredibly compelling story. I think the acting is unbelievable. It's a thought-provoking movie. It's rich with thought. But it's on the A tier. Three movies left. A movie that's going to go up to the top five is Zero Dark Thirty. So that means I have five up there now. So I'm going to take, I mean, I take one off. Zero Dark Thirty, I think, is... Jessica Chastain's best performance. It's simple. Uh, Alexander Despot did the score. I think the music is great in this movie. Not like Academy Award winning, but perfect for building up tension. Uh, Alexander Despot, I mean, he's done. Benjamin Button, Fantastic Mr. Fox. A lot of Wes Anderson movies. Grand Budapest Hotel. Shape of Water. Imitation Game. Argo. King's Speech. Uh, it, it's just such a riveting movie. I get why some people don't like it. But it is, in terms of political thriller, like, it is up there. Uh, it, it's it's a movie that you, you, your heart kind of races watching it for, for obvious reasons. It's a pretty compelling story, important story in American history. Um, but I, I, I just think it's a really great and well-acted movie, especially from Jessica Chastain. I love the Jason Clark role, James Gandolfini. He's in it as Leon Panetta, which I think is a really cool role as well. I, I Zero Dark Thirty. Some people thought it was one of the best picture. I know why it didn't. I just think Argo was better. But man, again, a riveting political thriller. Ar- Argo and Zero Dark Thirty were two political thrillers that were like top of the game in 2012. Great movies. I'm going to leave it up there on the A. Joining it, excuse me, on the top five. Joining on the top five tier, Django Unchained, which means I'm going to take Silver Linings Playbook off. I'm going to put it on the A tier. Uh, Django is actually my fifth. This is how good, this is how much of a Quentin Tarantino fan I am. Django is my fifth favorite or fifth best Tarantino movie, but it's a kind of relevant. It's a 95 out of a, out of a hundred. Jamie Foxx, incredible in the role. Leonardo DiCaprio should have won an Oscar. Uh, Christoph Waltz is good in this. I think he's better in Glorious Bastards, but he's really good in this. He won an Oscar for it. He should not have beat Alan Arkin. Alan Arkin should have won best supporting actor this year. Uh, Django Unchained is great. Like, what more do I have to say about Django? People have seen Django. It's just, it's got that fucking look, that Tarantino look. You're like, God damn, I'm seeing a fucking movie right now. Like, this is this is cinema. Uh, and then, lastly, 21 Jump Street. We're taking off Skyfall. 21 Jump Street goes on the top five for me. My top five of, two, of 2012. Argo, Moonrise Kingdom, Zero Dark Thirty, Django Unchained, and 21 Jump Street. I love Skyfall. Skyfall's great. It's not the best Bond, though. 21 Jump Street is one of my favorite comedies. I think one of the better comedies ever made. Uh, it is such a good action comedy. We're, we're, let's 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 talk action comedies real quick. MovieRankings.net. Go to filters, then go to subgenre. Go to action comedy. You can even go to ratings and sort it by my ratings if you want to see what I think. Action comedy is number three all time for me behind Nice Guys and Ghostbusters. Tied with Ghostbusters, right above Tropic Thunder. Talk about underrated Nice Guys. I mean, at this point, the Nice Guys at this point isn't even underrated. It's just just needs a sequel. 21 Drum Street is so fucking funny, so quotable, so many great moments, some meta moments, music, 
crushes the theme is great 21 drum street it, it's one of those movies where i was amped for because the trailer was funny and i remember seeing it with friends in college and i was hyped and they were like hey, i'm excited it exceeded everyone's expectations such a funny movie i love 21 drum street so that's it that that's my my bottom five worst of the worst in 2012 at least from the list that you guys put out you gave to me battleship red dawn 2012 that's my boy devil inside then top five argo moonrise kingdom Zero Dark Thirty, Django Unchained, and 21 Jump Street. So that's it. 2012 movies. Next week, we're going to do – make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Got to do that. Help us out. Next week, I'm going to do uh, movie concessions from drinks to salty snacks to sweet snacks. We're going to talk food. And then the week after that, we'll do another vote. At the end of the next episode, we'll do another vote, and you can vote for the list, and I'll, I'll rank based off what you have. We'll, we'll get creative and fun with it, though. Uh, thanks, as always, for watching. Put some comments below. What's your top 2012 movie? What's your bottom 2012 movie? I'll talk to you next time.